What's one of the biggest habits that can tank your writing? Let's find out together. Hi, welcome to the Writing Momentum Podcast. I'm Gina Maselli, and I'm here with my husband and writing partner and tough editor oh, really? and <laughs> what else? All around cheerleader. All around cheerleader. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> my name's Chris. Christopher Maselli. <laughs> We're so glad you're here with us today. And if you'll notice, this is part three, Chris, of a series we've been doing on habits that can tank someone's writing. Ooh, yeah. There's, you know, there are habits we can develop in our lives that can just really make it hard for us to be successful when it comes to our writing. And we've been talking about those. In part one, we talked about what? We talked about comparison. Oh, getting in that comparison trap will just mm -hmm. really be terrible and will keep you so discouraged and playing some severe mind games, but also just being out of the writing world, just not being a part of that and not making friends in it, building that tribe, that can really tank your writing. It can really get you off track. And then not just, not just the tribe, but also stay up to date with what's going on with writing, mm -hmm. with reading books about writing or watching videos about writing, right. just kind of keeping your mind set on those things. Those can really help your writing. But if you're not doing that, you kind of tank your writing right. because you're not filling up your tank <laughs> to use a play on words, I guess, uh, as you go. Right. Right. Exactly. And then part two. Part two was talking about distractions oh, while writing. I'm always I, that's probably the hardest one for me. I always find myself easily distracted. Yeah, I think everybody does, which is why, you know, I think we talked about the Pomodoro technique and because that gives you time for distraction. Mm -hmm. It gives you time when something is something that you need to put your attention to. You build in some time to step away from writing in a very structured way to get your those distractions taken care of and then get right back into it and make the most of it. That's right. And then we also talked about perfectionism. Oh, maybe that's the one that I <laughs> struggle with. I think a lot of people struggle with perfectionism, just always feeling like your work isn't good enough or feeling like it, I don't know, fill in the blank. Your writing's not good enough. Your marketing's not good enough. Your book isn't this enough or that enough or just whatever. It's again, it's a mind game. Well, today we're going to talk about the final habit that can take your writing. And I'm a little bit concerned. Gina. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned because if we haven't <laughs> stepped on your toes yet, this one may do it. Because I have not mentioned this to anyone where they're just like, ouch, that really steps on my toes. It steps on my toes. I've got to tell you, I'm not uh, happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so this one we're going to talk about, we're going to call it mindless screen time. And when we define screens, we're talking about television screens and computer screens and mobile phone screens. But before you just shut this off and say, I don't hear about that, I think you're going to be fascinated at the numbers that we're going to share in this episode. And I really encourage you to listen because when I discovered these numbers, it kind of rocked my world. And I think that it might rock yours. Well, and I want to add one more to your list. Oh. You said television. You said phone. Yep. You said, what else did you it's say? Computer screen. Computer screen. Yeah. I would also say video game screen. Oh, video game screens too. Yeah. All of those things are mm -hmm. mindless screen time. They're now, mindless entertainment. We need to set a disclaimer here. <laughs> and that is screens in themselves are not bad, right? I find a good portion <laughs> of my life is surrounded by screens. I learn from screen time. I work all day on a computer screen. And so when we're talking about, that's why we use the word mindless screen time, because we're not talking about exercising with a fitness video. We're not talking about learning something new online. We're talking about the times when you're mindlessly just on your phone scrolling or you know, you're just, there's like nothing else to do. And you're just sitting and watching television or playing a video game or something Or on like social that. media. Or on social media, right? That's what we're going to define as mindless screen time. Yeah. Now, I told you we're going to get to numbers. And this is going to be really interesting. Because when I first found out about this, it happened when I was, I believe I was reading an article. 
that said that, you know, people in the U.S. roughly watch over four hours of screen time per day. And we're not talking about, again, things you learn from, exercise, whatever, just mindless screen time. And I thought, no way. No way I do that. I'm a conscientious individual. I don't spend that much time in front of screens mindlessly because I, you know, think about these things. I, I don't want to do that. I, I want to make sure. And again, I believe a degree of mindless screen time in our lives. I think it's good to have some downtime and it's fun, right? Screens can be very captivating today and they can be a lot of fun. So I'm not saying that we should just cut these out of our lives. But being aware of these numbers is important, isn't it? It's important. It's a little humbling as well. <laughs> it's a little humbling. So here's it's the, humble, here's the numbers. Humbling. Here's the idea. So I'd read that most people spend about four hours a day. And I thought, well, not me. And so began to look at my day. Thought, well, I'll wake up and um, I might watch you know, half an hour YouTube videos or so. It's easy to do that when you're watching, catching up on the news, whatever. At lunchtime, a lot of times I would play a mobile game on my phone. Sometimes during the day as I worked, I might jump into social media for half an hour or more. With the family, maybe around dinner, after dinner, we might watch an episode of an hour-long TV show, maybe two. Now, if you're doing the math, you know what we're at, don't you? We're already at four hours. And this is from someone who's like, I'm very busy. I'm very productive. And yet I realized man, I'm putting in four hours a day. Now, that's not necessarily bad, is it? It's, well, and it's broken up, you know. It's you, broken up. You don't usually sit and binge for hours at a time. Right. But now here's what I want you to hear those as far as the numbers. go. To me, rocked my world. If you spend one hour a day, one hour. How many hours per year are you spending? 365. 365, right? So let's take that, though, and divide that by the amount of waking hours we have every day. I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to. You seem like you're feeling convicted. Too. Like, you're like, I just really don't want to do this podcast episode anymore. <laughs> okay. So if you do 365 hours a year, and we divide that by 16, which is 16 hours a day that we are awake because we're sleeping eight hours. We're awake 16 hours. How many waking hours each year are we spending in terms of days just watching mindless entertainment? Turns out it's 22 days over three weeks a year. That's for one hour a day. Okay. What if it's two? Well, I'd be 44. <laughs> so it'd be <laughs> 44 no days, right? So over a month, if you spend just two hours a day with mindless entertainment, that's spending over a month a year, one twelfth of your year, over that. Six weeks, just about, just with mindless entertainment. But remember, my example, I, I, I was more than that. How about three? How, how many, if you spend three hours a day, how many hours is that a year? It's over a thousand hours a year, 1,095 hours a year, or 68 days in waking hours. If you spend three hours a day, you're spending more than two months of your entire year waking hours watching mindless entertainment. And you know what? It still wasn't how many I was spending. I was spending about four on average. And that's not counting binge watching a TV show on the weekend, going to the movies, right? It doesn't count any of that stuff. This is just what I was kind of doing on a regular habit every day. Four hours every day is 1,460 hours a year. I'm just, I'm looking at Gina's face in the monitor here. It's just shaking her head. Four hours a day is 1,460 hours a year or over nine, it's 91 days waking hours. You're spending a a quarter of your year, if you're spending four hours a day, three months out of every 12, gone to mindless entertainment every year. That's very easy to do, y'all, on a regular basis. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying all this to make you feel bad, to make you feel you know, necessarily convicted. I just, I think it's really good to be aware of this because I know that we as writers, as authors, often feel like we just don't have enough time to do things like our writing, 
right? And, and we think, how come I never have enough time? And yet we don't realize the kind of time that we can put into just being entertained, right? And again, it's not that this is bad stuff, right? I love entertainment. I love watching television. I love playing video games. I love doing this stuff. I love watching YouTube. But keeping those things out of check can tank your writing time without you even realizing it. What if you find yourself doing five hours? That's 114 days a year, six hours a day, 137 days every year. That's four and a half months, a third of your year if you do six hours a day, which actually is not hard to do on average if you bring in all those binge times and movies and all the things that you don't count just on your regular day to day. And here's the other thing that I think that we really need to think about. You've gotten quiet. You. <laughs> She's like, she does not want to have this episode right now. This is the quietest she has ever been on an episode of Freddie Moment. It's like the I just, just went through my mind of maybe I should have let you do this one all along. <laughs> and don't you? So here's, a, here's a, what I think that was important to think about. We're not just talking about wasted hours. If we're spending four hours a day or three months of our year, right? If we're spending that much time with mindless media, aren't we also framing our world with that much mindless information? Like, aren't, isn't that what we're framing? I mean, think about it. a quarter of your year. We talked about how we want to not get out of the writing world. To get into the writing world, we've got to spend time in it. So let's flip this around. What if you spend one hour a day, one hour a day in the writing world, one hour a day saying, I'm going to just find out what's going on in the writing world. I'm going to learn from a trainer. I'm going to listen to the Writing Moment podcast. I'm going to join you all for Writing Moments or whatever. One hour a day. That means that you'll have spent at the end of the year 22 days through over three weeks of your year focused on writing. What if you say, I'm going to spend that plus I'm going to write for an hour every day. Now, at the end of your year, you'll spend 44 days. Wow waking hours, focused on nothing but writing in your book. What if you bump that up to three hours a day? And you say, well, I, said, I don't have three hours a day. Well, no, wait. Think of how easy it was for me to just use mindless entertainment. I spent 20 minutes in the morning, another you know, 45 minutes at lunch, an hour later in the day. What if you did the same thing with your writing? Lunchtime, you... Go ahead and find out what's going on in the writing world. Maybe in the morning, you read a book about writing. Maybe in the evening, you spent an hour writing. If you do that and you add up to about three hours a day, by the end of the year, you'll have spent over a thousand hours writing. A thousand hours with your mind focused on this thing that you say is super important to you. A thousand hours. That's over two months of your year just focused on your writing. And of course, the numbers go up if you spend more. I think that is super empowering. Mm -hmm. So as much as mindless screen time can tank your writing, if, you're, if, you, if it's not in check, and again, just that little disclaimer, I totally enjoy it. I still do even after finding these numbers. But I've tried to start putting it in check. I said, you know, I don't want to spend four hours of my day with you know, a quarter of my year with mindless entertainment. Instead, I'm going to keep that in check. I'm going to try and frame my mind differently, my, my worldview, make sure that I've got to focus where I want to focus. And I start to bring those things in place. And the things that are important to me, I put regular time into because when I do that, at the end of the year, wow, that's a lot of time. It, is. it adds up fast, doesn't it? Well, and I'm thinking, you know, you've had some people that have reached out to us recently about wanting to finish their book and they're staring at empty pages or they're overwhelmed or feel disconnected or whatever it is. And just by sitting down and forcing yourself to write, forcing yourself to journal, forcing yourself to start exercising that muscle, 
it does start coming together. It does start coming back. And so I think there are a lot of books out there that would get finished oh, man. from people who have struggled with this. That, yeah. And that's why I think, you know, the internet is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Mobile phones are wonderful things. Yeah. But so, so just practically, I feel like I, I, I need to explain like how I've made this work in my life. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've done with my mobile phone is I've taken all social media off of it, right? Mm -hmm. Gotten rid of all the social media. I've gotten rid of um, all the video apps. All the things might make it something other than a smartphone. Like in, to make it an entertainment device, I've taken the entertainment for the most part off of my phone. I still use it for phone calls, of course, and texting and maps and, you know, the rewards it stores, all that sort of thing. But I've tried to keep it just as that kind of phone, not an entertainment device. That is super empowering. It's hard to do. I'll tell you, it's hard to do because you're used to having it as an entertainment device telling you to check out line or, you know, anywhere you go, you, you know, but by taking those things off, it's greatly reduced that mindless video time. It really has. I know I took social media off of mine as well, mm -hmm. and it's made a huge difference. It makes a huge, huge difference. difference. And in fact, I'll, Sometimes if I'm all of a sudden catch myself or I don't catch myself until I've picked it up because I, I'm standing in the line or I'm just mm -hmm. sitting there waiting for something and I pick it up. And it's funny because all of a sudden I go, well, I don't really have anything on here to look at right. anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And that, that does. I mean, it also just gives your mind a chance to rest. It gives, it gives your mind a chance to rest. I know. Chris, since you've been doing this, since you've been super purposeful mm -hmm. on that, you have said that you've noticed your creativity has gone up. You've noticed that, well, I'll let you speak. What are some of the things that yeah. you've noticed I, I, have I've happened? Noticed I've had a little more peace of mind. My creativity has gone up. And I've started to do things like dream at night. It's been years since I've dreamed at night. I just thought it was something that's like getting older and not dream anymore. I don't know what that's mm -hmm. about. No, I think it's because my mind was... I guess, preoccupied with all the mindless entertainment or something. And now that's... I think it's just that it's engaged. It. It's more it's engaged constantly engaged. But now you've kind of disengaged, but you yes. give that space in your mind just to be creative. Okay. I think that's what you're experiencing. It does I mean, take discipline too, though. So I've taken that stuff off my phone. That's an easy way, right? And I could still check social media, you know, on my computer if I want to. But... You know, other than that, like I've had to purposely say, OK, I'm going to try not to watch more than like one show a night. To me, it's easier to do a show versus an hour. Right. I'm not timing myself when I watch television. I'll do a show a night or, mm -hmm. you know, the one movie. It's in like an hour and a half. That's it. No more than that. And that's hard to do sometimes. But I found that it's you know what's also done is it's giving me more time to read. I love reading, but it's easy to stop reading when because it's just easier to use the remote, turn on the TV. Right. And so it's helped me read more. And then the other thing I've done is because I've taken all the games and that off my phone, like during lunchtime, I'm not doing that stuff anymore. Now I'll either read or I'll, you know, get engaged with a teaching, a training, something like that. And that's just been very beneficial. I think that's great. So we encourage you. Here's your homework. Find, is there something, is there some way you can reduce your mindless screen time? You don't have to completely cut it out. But can you reduce it so you're not spending over a thousand hours a year watching? Yeah, just being purposeful Be with purposeful, it. Be purposeful, intentional. I think uh, intentional. I think that's what you're talking about is just yes. being intentional and not just sitting there letting it wash over you without really thinking about it. And hey, if you mm -hmm. have found yourself doing something like this or if this has benefited you, would you let us know? I'd love yeah. to hear what your tips and tricks are to not becoming lost in mindless entertainment or if you've had struggles with it let us know about that too we'd love yeah. to just encourage you and let you know hey we're right there with you we're on your writing team that's right uh, you know that's the thing that we say often is this is something that we don't believe that writing is a solitary activity it's something that's better done in community together that's why we've got our writing moments on if you go to writingmomentum.com we write together every week with other writers and that's a way that we can just encourage one another keep ourselves mm -hmm. in the writing world Right. And that's strong because together, together we have writing momentum. See you next week.